Before making the final run to the summit, there's a gorge to cross before being swallowed up by the mountain one last time. Not far from the summit, passengers can see the original Trail of 98. Moving their ton of goods, lines of exhausted men and horses made their way along the narrow path over and over again. The agonizing procession went on for almost two years. It was February the 18th of 1899 when rail workers pushed their way to the summit the hardships of attaining the White Pass on foot came to an end. The flags of two nations and their states and provinces mark the summit of the White Pass and the international border between the United States and Canada. It was here, at the summit, the Canadian Northwest Mounted Police allowed entry into Canada for those stampeders with their required ton of goods. Now, 20 miles of rail from Skagway, the train has climbed from sea level to almost 3,000 feet in less than two hours. A pretty speedy trip, considering it would have taken the average stampeder a month or more to move their supplies to this point on the trail. For passengers that have chosen the White Pass Summit excursion, it's time to retrace their tracks back to Skagway. A quick switch of the engines on the extra set of rails, and passengers are off on their ride down the mountain guaranteed to be just as exciting as the trip coming up. Summit Lake is one of the series of lakes forming the very headwaters of the Yukon River. This 3,000-mile waterway would carry the Stampeders to the Klondike Gold Fields and Dawson City before emptying into the Bering Sea in western Alaska. For those traveling on further into Canada, the most notable change is in the landscape. The train is now traveling on a high plateau of exposed and fragmented rock, the effect of a past climate which favored the formation of glaciers, the power of which gouged numerous deep basins, now filled with the hue of winter's meltwater. The lack of vegetation and soil suggests, in terms of glacial time, the area hasn't been free of ice for all that long. The views are as beautiful and imposing as any to be found on the entire route. The earth here is not as unyielding as the coast mountains. Distant slopes are filled with a broken mass of rock from the mountaintops above. From the commanding view on the coach, passengers see occasional artifacts of White Pass history, some of which are remnants of snow fences. These fallen relics are testament to the high snowfall and fierce winds the men and equipment of WP and YR endured in these mountains during the winter. Annual snowfalls of over 20 feet often brought rail traffic to a halt. Until 1964, White Pass and Yukon Route maintained a fleet of rotary snowplows used to keep the vital link of rail open. 
Experienced rotary operators worked with pusher engines to clear the track, often churning through drifts higher than the engines themselves. The workers communicated using a series of whistles, signaling stop, back up, and forward. Rotary plow number one remains operational and is occasionally used to clear the track before the railroad opens in spring. Traveling northward, the unfolding panorama is revealed from a track with few curves. Solid rock now losing the battle for dominance to shrubs and coniferous trees. The lakes have now turned to streams, prompting the realization, for the first time since leaving Skagway, the train is traveling downhill. The two-story water tower at Fraser filled thirsty steam-powered locomotives and rotary snowplows. It's one of the few original railroad buildings still surviving from the gold rush era and continues to be used for steam excursions today. Now, Fraser is a bustling transfer site and the official port of entry for Canada Customs. Many passengers either leave or board the train going on to or coming from another adventure. For those fortunate enough to be continuing on to Bennett and Carcross, it's a quick stop before riding the White Pass rails further into history. Riders on the White Pass and Yukon route follow in the footsteps of those gold seekers and railroad builders who once passed this way. This historic triumph over challenge shaped their everlasting legacies, their stories revealed along the railroad's meanderings, their voices rumble from the rails and echo through the mountains and valleys of this awe-inspiring land. They were people with passion, vision, and courage. Their achievements and failures, the very essence of a chapter of history kept alive by today's riders on the White Pass and Yukon route. WP and YR continues to share this fascinating episode of history with future adventurers, so they too can comprehend and appreciate the achievements of those responsible for this historic engineering feat as they make their journey back in time on the White Pass and Yukon Road, the scenic railway of the world.